Yesterday ended the Overwatch tournament at DreamHack Winter 2016. It was a very interesting tournament with uh, lots of things going on meta-wise and Misfits won in the end, but that's not what I want to focus on here today. I want to talk about the map selection process that they had at DreamHack and why I think it was really the best system that we've seen in all of Overwatch thus far. The big problem that we have in Overwatch is that there's simply too many maps to play. Right? We're currently at 13 maps, we're soon going to be at 14 once Oasis comes out, and that's really, if you compare it to CSGO, that's twice the amount of maps. Even in CSGO, no pro team is really good on every single, uh, on all seven of those maps, to the point where just being solid on five or six maps makes you potentially a really good team, right? Um... An example of this, of course, a small anecdote, was reinforced after the Atlantic showdown on a talk show. He was saying, you know, kind of jokingly saying, on Volskaya, we only had two strategies. It was like Lucio speed boost and go left, and then Lucio speed boost and then go right. And th that was about it. Of course, he was saying this as a bit of a joke, but it does show that these pro teams don't have enough time within, like, a, within the week to practice every single map and have elaborate strategies on every single specific map so they have to prioritize uh, the maps that they think are going to be the most played so they go back to the king's road to the hollywood to the nepal lijang that kind of thing right with this amount of maps you can't specialize in terms of compositions you know it kind of pushes you towards playing the same composition on multiple maps even if it's not perfect even if it's not like the greatest idea to play a certain comp on a specific map if you've just been practicing only this comp and then playing it to every map well that's what you're going to be doing and i don't think that's as interesting as it could potentially be right so no specialization per map and also no specialization per mode all of this is being prevented by the map formats that we have, right? So an example that we're going to go through, we're going to go through different map formats that tournaments have had, and we're going to start off with OG and Apex, of course, the tournament in Korea, right? So as an example, a previous, ma previous match that was played in the group stage, Conbox versus Envious, right? You have per set a predetermined game mode every single time, right? So set one is always going to be king of the hill. Set two is always going to be hybrid. Set three always going to be two CP and then and then payload and then hybrid again, right? Every single time, right? Now the map pool is kind of trimmed down, which they said was to help those teams with the fact that there were just too many maps. The big problem here is that the tournament is the one choosing like which of the maps are not going to be played, right? So here on the first map, it's Nepal that was selected. Well, what happens if those teams just had practiced a lot on Li Jiang and Ilios, for example, right? Because it's not the teams that are trimming down the map pool, you know, it can potentially skew results. What if Team A had a lot of practice on Nepal, but then Team B used that time to practice like Li Jiang? Well, potentially in this series, Team A has a big advantage, okay? So that's not great, right? Also, with the fact that you have one game mode, what you have every single game mode that's being played, well, you're not going to be able to specialize in one of those game mode because every single match, you're going to have to play all three of them, right? So that's, I think that's not really a great system. Another example of format that we can go through is the Gosu Gamers uh, Weekly Cups or the ESL Go For Overwatch Cups that we see every weekend. Um, and in that format, the both teams just ban you know one after the other all the way until you only have the remaining amount of maps that you want right so if it's the best of one you ban all the way down to one if it's best of three all the way down to three and so on so on so on right so here with the banning system it's good because you're trimming down those maps that you know teams don't want to play the problem however is that you end up with just this kind of middle ground of maps that everyone wants to play. So it's kind of like the same thing. If you want if you want to have like this pocket pick of Hanamura that, you know, nobody plays, nobody likes, but you want to work on that map and be it like your home map, you can't do that because those teams are going to have so many bands that it's probably not going to be in the map pool in the end, right? So here's how DreamHack did things differently, right? So this is not going to look great, but bear with me okay so in a best of three map we have team a banning two maps then team b doing this, the same then both teams banning another map then finally we get to pick a map right and then more 
more bands go down until you only have a remaining map, right? We're going to start with the remaining map, and then based on who loses that, they're going to be able to go to the map that they picked, right? If we go to a best of five, kind of the same thing. Both teams ban two maps, right? Then they both pick one map, then they both ban another map, and then pick another map, right? A final ban, and then you already have the remaining map. You start with the remain, remaining map, right? And then based on the loser, once again, you can choose within the map pool that you selected, right? So in this system, you cannot entirely ban a mode, right? So if one team wants to be like the pros of 2CP and they want to work really well on, on Anubis, Hanamura, and Volskaya, you can do that because it's not like those three maps cannot be banned before you can pick that map. Right, so you're going to be able to specialize in one of those game mode if that's what you want. Right, same thing though. If there are maps that you absolutely don't want to play, you're going to be able to ban two of those right off the bat every single time. So you're not being forced like it was at the Atlantic Showdown. You're not being forced onto maps that you quite simply don't want to play. Right, which I think is very important for the competitive integrity of the game. We have these, these team map pools, right? And it enables then to have really quite simply um, better analysis at the analysis desk afterwards. Because he, here, this was NIP versus Fnatic. So you can see here the bands, right? And this enables the analysts to really make predictions. I don't think predictions make any sense if you don't know like what the maps are going to be played, right? So this this really this 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 was great. This was really a great system. I think more tournaments need to start doing this instead of this let's just ban until we only have the map pool or let's you know kind of like predetermine what maps we trim, what maps are going to be played, that kind of thing. Leave the freedom to the teams. Let them choose what they want to play, how they want to specialize, and really that's I believe how we're going to get the best possible games.